So here is the here is the example that we want to explore. So we have a, a human handing over a cup, and there's clearly uh, something different going on. And uh, without telling anything, I'm assuming that you you figure it out that uh, one of the cups is empty and the other cup is full of something and it's full of water. And um, so 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 the objective is to um, explore the human the motion profiles of humans when manipulating manipulating objects with different conditions, so whether the cup is empty or full, and then utilize the differences to uh, identify the human intention. So whether the human wants to express to others that uh, the cup is perfectly fine to manipulate wherever, however you want. And uh, the cup, you have to be careful here because the cup is full of is full and uh, I don't want to spill and I don't want you to spill. And so, and then build um, a human robot uh, pipeline so that robots can also take advantage of this information like humans and adapt its uh, controller to manipulate the objects the same way that a human would manipulate. Um, and there's there's some interesting work um, similar to, 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 to this type of, of, uh, of work that I do. So in computer vision, they do some some very, very cool works where they can uh, understand it, the cup, uh, the percentages of, of, of water or container that uh, of liquid that the container can, can is, has. Um, but if the cup is opaque, then they cannot extract any information from it. And um, uh, we argue that uh, we, uh, we might provide information um, from the human motion um, by manipulating the object, whether the object uh, has has uh, something inside or not, just from the just from the uh, from the human pro from the motion profile. And there's also uh, uh, works on exploring the affordances of objects. And uh, one type of work is exploring the affordance reasoning. So looking at um, at the uh, at an object and seeing if if there's a possibility of containing something. And again, we can we can ex we can uh, express uh, we can add information by by manipulating objects with different types of conditions. We can again observe motion our motion profile and see that there has to be something inside the object. And this 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 goes in line with my previous work, which is. Uh, Previous works, which is explores human-human interactions and um, how um, how how humans uh, express their their in, their intention uh, when performing different actions, and how we can explore this uh, this um, this kinematics uh, to provide uh, robots with uh, with information on how what type of action the human is performing. So. Um, so before, so in order to analyze in depth this uh, this this motion, we we, we collected human human experiments where different humans are interacting with different objects, and uh, there's the, the, those two conditions present. So the object is full and the object is empty, and uh, there's different types of containers. So from the analysis, by looking at the most relevant cue, which is the motion of the of the of the human wrist, we can notice that. Um, the actions where the cup is full, it takes longer than when the cup is empty. And, um, and this can also be reiterated by looking at the, at the velocity over the distance. And the distance is uh, it's the distance between the, from the moment the object is picked to the final handover, to the, men, to the meeting point of the handover. We call this the distance, where zero, zero is when the, when the, point, when the handover is, is, uh, is, 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 com is completed. So the object is stationary and it's at the final point. And we see that the velocities for when the cups are full, so when the, when, when the human is being more careful, that the motion is slower in comparison to, to when, the, when the cup is empty. So, so then we, so we've looked at the, we've analyzed the, the human demonstrations from our data set, and now we want to use this, this, this data to build our models. So what we do is we segment uh, the actions from the moment the object is picked to the handover point, and uh, then we use as a, we use we want to use uh, dynamical systems, time independent dynamical systems to model, to 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 create two models. So to, for the model for the to, to to express the careful motion and the model to express the not careful motion. And our state is then the wrist the wrist location, uh, and the the wrist and the the wrist location in respect to the handover meeting point. And then we um, use Gaussian mixture models to encode the dynamics that represent this uh, this wrist position in respect to the velocity that the wrist is moving. And uh, then after we have our Gaussian mixture models for both 
models. Uh, we then, we then um, use Gaussian measure regression to uh, generate our desired velocities um, with, with respect to a particular uh, position of the wrist over the, doing the handover. And the reason why we, we compute um, the desired velocities is that um, when we're running uh, in our pipeline, when a, when a human is interacting with a robot, we, uh, the, the wrist position of the human is being fed to our models, and then Gaussian emission regression generates the desired velocity to each of the to each of the corresponding models, and then our classifier will then compute uh, the the difference between the, those two desired velocities and the real velocity that the human is uh, moving its wrist, and so our classifier takes then takes takes then the error of this of this uh, of this difference for both cases. And then we compute, we, we compute this, uh, something called uh, the belief system. And so we have um, two belief systems that um, combined sum to one. And this belief system depends then on, on our error and depends on, our, on, our, on, the, on, the, on the two dynamical systems and depends on the, on the previous, uh, on the previous, uh, on the previous belief from the previous uh, iteration steps, because this is run online and um, so we have this term which is the adaptation rate which we tweak depending on how um, how much weight we put onto uh, the new information from the new times from the new time step of the belief system and uh, in order to force our, our classifier to pick either careful or not careful motion we, we use something called a winner take all mechanism which uh, when we have when we start having the belief system starting to pick favor one over the other, the winner take all adds more weight um, to to this belief system and reduces the weight of the other um, in order to emphasize and to uh, pick one of the motions as, as as soon as possible and without without having a, a continuous switching of, of, the, of being undecided for too long. So, so then our results is uh, we train on three, diff on three different people, uh, handing over one type of objects for the two conditions, of course. And then we test on three, uh, three, different, three other people uh, by when they're manipulating, handing over the same object, which is the red cup, as the training set, and then two other objects, which is the champagne cup and the plastic cup. And uh, our results are quite, are quite good. Uh, most of the actions are correctly classified. And they're classified quite quickly. So we have here that uh, for the for the for the for the cases where the cup is empty, we have a path classification of, of not careful motions. Uh, so between ten and, it takes 10 to, ten to thirty steps to classify correctly, when the actions take around a hundred steps to to conclude to compete to conclude. Since we're we're running, we we're, we're using a. a marker infrared markers that have uh, which which are run at 50 50 hertz so then we have um, for the case of the of the full cup we also have most of our actions or almost almost all um being classified as a as a careful motion and again they're run they're classified quite quickly and uh, so we can then run our human robot uh, pipeline uh, and the, the 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 application we use is that uh, when the when the human then is uh, performs a not careful motion with the, the controller is adapted to not care about the orientation, but in the case of the right, when the when the, the human is careful, the controller is slower grasping the the object, and it takes into account the orientation to prevent it from spilling. Um, so yeah, so our conclusions are that um, there's a different there there's def definitely difference from motion profile by looking at the cup. And is whether there is cup is empty or full, we can explore this uh, this 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 uh, this differences. Um, by looking at the, at the human motion, and we can apply this to a human robot to interaction in order to if, inform this information for the robot to adapt just like a human would. And uh, as a future work, we can definitely uh, look at the, um, at the fragility of how cups, um, how the fragility of the cups that also takes into, 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 a, into a, takes a, an impact on how humans manipulate. And there's also some 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 human pre preference going on. Which you have to take into account as well. Thank you.